Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 12 of We the Revolution. It's a new day, it's also a new act. And it starts with a new message from who made the decision of Frederick. Archbishop Jean-Baptiste Gobel, I can't remember if we read this the last time, but Archbishop Jean-Baptiste Gobel was the one who made the decision on the death of your child. He should be your next target. So this will be our next intrigue, I guess. It sounds familiar, I think I said this before. So she looks like a seamstress. Let's find out what she did. She's accused of advocating monarchy. Aimé Dané, a 19-year-old orphan who is currently employed at a loom shop, is accused of being a monarchist. Prior to the revolution, the defendant was working as a kitchen maid in the Parisian residence of Xavier de Bordat, the Baron de Lezine, who was a sworn supporter of Citizen Capet. After the beginning of the revolution, he was accused of plotting against France. However, because of insufficient evidence, he was only stripped of his title and fortune. Danae was denounced by the head of the loom shop, 56-year-old Louis Berthier. He accused her of supporting monarchists and having counter-revolutionary views. Aimé allegedly committed theft of groceries from the loom shop pantry. It would have been an ordinary crime if not for the fact that she then handed the food to Xavier de Bordat. After his trial, the former baron started living on the street dressed in rags and begging for bread. The crime was witnessed by another worker, 51-year-old Barbara Cuvier, who also worked at the Baron's residency, though only for a short period of time. She testified to having seen Aimé take bread and cheese from the pantry and give it to de Borda. He also nagged other employees of the loom shop, asking them to bring him food in exchange for money. The former aristocrat was arrested for vagrancy. During the interrogation, he confirmed everything that we had previously established. However, he denied recognizing Aimé and offering her anything for the food. Hmm, okay, so gave her former master bread, who didn't have a house, didn't have a home, who didn't have anything. Um, but everyone wants her to be killed, so how much would they hate me if I let her go? A bit, but I don't know, it's nothing that I would say that I wouldn't be able to come back from so uh, let's let's make the questions and then hear her out so what would be counter-revolutionary supporting monarchists is definitely counter-revolutionary and it's also the accusation right yes the offender's personality is oh it's not her personality then is there anything that can be her personality? No. Okay. Hmm, <laughs> so the theft of groceries is... Is it the accusation? Yeah. Then... Money for food could have been the motive. The kitchen maid? I don't know how she could be accused of being a kitchen maid, so... Maybe this is a trap, because I don't see how this is counter-revolutionary, or this should be an accusation. I don't know, the Baron the baron could be, like, counter-revolutionary. Yes, okay, that's it. Bourgeois whore! Don't waste a guillotine on her, bring her to us! Uh, no. The defendant wanted to be human in inhuman times, or maybe she was just stupid in times that have no mercy for stupidity. I cannot decide which epitaph will look better on her tombstone. Yeah, but what if she doesn't die? She won't die if I don't sentence her to death. Although the problem is you would never know. I, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point, if I let someone free, that the mob doesn't want to be free, everyone would want her to be... everyone would just kill her on the spot. I wouldn't be surprised by that, because those people here are animals. Citizen, what is your name? I'm Aimé. Aimé Dané. What can you say in your defense? I, I didn't do anything. She is obviously lying. The files contain a detailed description of the reason for her trial. Citizen Danae, the principal of the weaving shop, claims that you were helping a sworn counter-revolutionary, Xavier de Bordat, the former Baron de Lezine, with food. 
I just fed a poor man. I didn't mean no harm. Why did you not feed a child instead of a former rich man? Should I pity an old man less than a child? That is a good question indeed. She's, uh, she's lying, as monarchists always do. She's just an orphan. How is she a monarchist? To be honest, I mean, yeah, she stole. But that's not why she's accused here. She's just accused of advocating monarchy. That's not why she's on trial here. So I only need to sentence her for advocating monarchy. So, hmm. Do you support the revolution? Yes, although now more often than before, the cupboard is bare. Probably because in the past you were among the privileged who spent their time in palaces. During the ancient regime we didn't even have cupboards. How is that her fault? Only you could have seen how we lived in those palaces. That's probably not that good to say to the people who never lived in palaces. So the revolution has disappointed you and you decided to help its enemies? No. I just fed a beggar who asked for a slice of bread. That beggar was the former Baron de Bordeaux, recognized by the court as an enemy of France and its people. The Baron had really changed. He's skinny, grey-haired, looked like he would faint any minute. I wonder if he ever took pity on anyone. What did you get from the Baron in exchange for food? A kind word. What else would a starving beggar have given to me? The only other thing he could offer would be lies. Witnesses claim that he promised you a lot of money from his hidden fortune. He was going crazy from hunger. Why would he live on the street if he had money? Well, who would believe such a thing? That is true, though. Oh, oh no, oops. Who knows, maybe he was living there because he did not want to draw attention to himself. If he had money, he could just buy food in a store. That is true. True, because at first I thought when I read that, that he gave money to the others, that maybe he wasn't welcome in any store or something that he had to sell other people. But it is true, it doesn't make any sense. Unless he could not, because nobody would trade with an enemy of the revolution. Ah, you said what I thought. So, wait, I just want to see this. Okay, so the other former employee said that they got money for bringing him food. Although really, it doesn't make any sense. Why would, if someone has money, why would he live on a street and then get arrested for this? Like, I don't know. It's a strange situation. Why did you help Citizen de Borda? He was starving, and I know how hunger feels. He was also sentenced for counter-revolutionary activities, which you, as his former employee, knew very well. I only saw a dirty, lice-ridden poor man. How could I recognize the Baron in him? I'm still not convinced it was him. Okay, so could this really be possible that she didn't recognize him? Are you trying to convince us that you did not recognize a man for whom you worked for so many years? So skinny, missing his hairpiece and rich clothing, he wouldn't recognize himself. Impossible. Would you have done the same if you knew the identity of the beggar? Criminals have to eat like any other person. He's just a beggar. What harm can he do to France? That is true, though. I mean... Seriously, he's still a human being. I don't know. I don't want to ask any further. I mean, we got the bar a little bit lower, so I don't know. Maybe it should be good if it, it would be okay if we asked her one question. But I don't know, because in the past it also happened that questions that were asked, I mean, they were marked as the red ones, but I don't know. I think questions that were asked and answered they weren't incriminating the people that much in my opinion but still the jury went all mad over it and i don't know so i think i don't want to f ask her any further i'm just gonna let her go because yeah she stole but still for stealing you also shouldn't lose your head you should go maybe to prison but seriously so yeah, because I'm just judging her for advocating monarchy and she didn't do that. She just fed a poor man who was a monarch, a baron before. I don't see anything counter-revolutionary in that. So, oh, and I also missed a message. Oops, what's this? 
There was no miracle and no infernal or heavenly powers were behind the vanishing bodies. It was merely young and inquisitive people. As we were able to establish, the bodies were dug up by medical students who wanted to examine them and conduct experiments that would be impossible with living subjects. We may be glad to see such hunger for knowledge, but is this the right way? And there is the danger that if the families learn the truth, they will surely not share the youngsters' enthusiasm. This was because we investigated the dug up graves. Well, I don't know, because, like like it says, this shouldn't be without the consent of the family or something like that. We don't know what experiments. Will they be useful to medicine? No. I, I think I'm gonna warn them. And she's going free. Wait, I'm just gonna read. Oh, no. Oh, okay, so now we have to ask again if she confessed to the crime. Where did the woman get the food? Didn't we... Didn't we read this? Committed theft of groceries from the loom shop pantry. Okay, I think I have to ask her how long she's been working for him. I hope this doesn't change too much. How long did you work for the former Baron de Lusine? A few years. I don't remember exactly. I was first brought to the kitchen as a child. So you had enough time to examine his face and remember it. The Baron never entered the kitchen and we were forbidden from going into the rooms. I usually saw him through the window when he was riding on a horse to hunt. Did you hear that? He was hunting that big shot. Are you saying that if he entered the kitchen when you were working for him, you would not have known who he was? That beggar looked familiar, but I didn't remember why. Okay, that didn't do a lot. That's good. I hope this doesn't break our necks, but... Did the groceries you gave to Xavier de Bordas belong to you? I I took them from Mr. Berthier's table because... So they were not yours? No. So you did steal them! Say it! Order! Does the defendant admit to stealing groceries belong to Mr. Berthier? Seriously, Tinville, you get carried away so easily. Where's your professionalism? No, Mr. Berthier here hasn't paid me for the last two months. It's him who should be tried for theft. Ooh! So how does this make her more guilty? The fact that you were not getting your salary does not give you permission to steal Citizen Berthier's possessions. You should have come to us. It's his fault that I can't afford bread for myself, not to mention the others too. He can deduct it from what he owes me. That is the mindset from the former regime. I am entitled to this. They say and take what they want without thinking of others. Seriously? Yeah, okay, it's not the right thing to then act in self-justice, but seriously, that's also... Mm. Berthier is no saint either. Thank you. No, no, no. Okay. Whew. We did it. We asked all the questions. So, she's going free. Screw you, common folk. Those are just hungry for executions, these people. Oh. According to reports, merchant Rémy Jacquemin bribed the managers of the river port to detain goods belonging to his competitors. That way, he was able to sell his own products at higher prices. Parisians had to pay for his crime. I hate this. Of course, he's not innocent. He did something wrong. But then on the other side, this is nothing to die for. <sighs> but he's also not innocent. Marquis Jean-Louis Berthelot, uh, enraged by his loss at a card game at his friend's place, attacked his own servants. He cut off the cook's ear with a cleaver when his butler tried to save her. Berthelot beat him to death. Uh, yeah, um, that is an easy one to decide. Yeah, really, you can hate me for this, but seriously. Philippe Rodier came home to find his daughter with her lover, Gaston Picard, a soldier a few years older than the girl. The furious father tried to kick the man out of his house. The two struggled. When the girl tried to separate them, she was accidentally pushed down the stairs and broke her neck. So now I'm going to judge the father. I don't know, I think this was an accident. He doesn't deserve to die for this. See, I made up a lot from what I lost just from these cases. Okay. So, did the defendant confess to the crime? The crime was being a monarchist, so no. 
Was her act counter-revolutionary? No. Where did the woman get the food? It was... She admitted to stealing it from her employer, but I knew I would have known that even without asking the question. How much had the Baron changed since the end of his trial? He had become skinny and grey-haired. Ever since she was a child, she worked for him. Oh, I could also acquire my mentor's help for these questions. I never realized. So, I don't know. The only thing that I wonder about is was her act counter-revolutionary. But it was I don't think it was because, seriously, he was already condemned. He was a poor man that she gave some bread. How is this counter-revolutionary? Just because he, was a, he used to be a baron, but I think he was stripped of his title, so... Hmm. Doesn't this count as anything? Let's see. The verdict in the case of Aimé Danae is not guilty. Lead the defendant out. I see how you could believe her explanations, though it is a pity that your intuition was not strong enough for you to see through them. Shut up, Tinville. I'm the judge here, not you. He let a thief go. That's not why she was accused here. Are we letting counter-revolutionaries go now? She wasn't a counter-revolution. You are an enemy of the people. Shut up. Oh, I really... Okay, well, seriously, everything that's not for the revolutionists or just for the revolutionaries is just counter-revolutionary, right? Oh, gotta remember that. So, it seems like I'm always starting with a bad reputation. I started to be so good the last time. No, people dislike me again. Screw you, people. Okay, well, have a nice life. Hope the mob doesn't kill you. As long as I have known you, you never were one for small talk. We haven't known him that long, though. I believe that actions speak louder than words. What do our actions say about you and I? That we don't allow other people to control our lives. We are in charge of our own destiny. Could you at least reveal where you are from? I can tell you that, just like your brother Bruno, I have also spent some time living on the street. My older half-brother kicked me out, and yet... I miss him. I am sorry. You shouldn't be. At least now I'm strong enough to do something about it. That's why I'm giving you Archbishop Gobel's head on a plate. Why? Because he was the one who planned your son's death and I learned of his deepest secret. Ooh. Plotting time! Gobel's father wanted his son to have a military career. His plans changed once Gobel had an illegitimate child. Careless heir was sent to Rome, where he was supposed to study and become a priest. The woman was taken to distant relatives in Paris. Jean Baptiste learned about it long after he completed his education. Naturally, he did everything he could to move to the capital city. His search for the woman and child were futile. That is his weak point, and our chance. We have to find them before he does. Gobel will not make a move if he knows that you have his family. Oh no. That was so mean. Okay. Why did Gobel attack me? You dealt with the Rolands and almost did the same to Pash. They were linked, so he must have thought that he would be your next target and decided to send you a message. Now I will send him one of my own. Kill everyone who has raised a hand to your family. It's the most precious thing you have. This is your best opportunity to attack, as people are blaming the clergy for steering the rebellion in the Vendée. Oh, my father loves me. It's funny because at first I thought that I had to please my wife, but right now I don't care about her anymore. She just sucks. Because she sucks, she's going to work on my statue now. Sorry, Dad, you have to too. But we're really behind on our statuing, so... Ooh. 
Are you kidding me? He just moved here and now... I hate you all. Everyone works even harder. Yeah, I know. So I'm just gonna free my friend here. So, hmm, I think I want to keep two points maybe for, for spending time with my family. So I'm going to spend two points on this here. So, I think the right way for attached was manipulation, if I remember correctly. Withdrawn was... Was withdrawn aggression? I think withdrawn was aggression because I think that's the first m emotions that we had with the first crowd. Hmm, you should look for real criminals. I don't know, we had a lot of manipulation so far, so maybe it's like humility or something. Let's see. Well, then maybe I'll just go with another aggression. What? This is the same emotion. Why is it different? Oh, well, but at least it's good. Oof. Hmm, so I think I'm gonna go with aggression. Try the second time, I don't know. You have the wrong man. Thank goodness you did not hurt him. The consequences would be dire. Such a misunderstanding. What a lark. Must be going deaf, arresting a spy is now a misunderstanding. You have caught a covert a covered agent of the Revolutionary Tribunal. Your actions reek of treason. Think twice before you decide to stand against me. Um, busy yourselves with seeking out real traitors. And be extremely careful not to pester any more of my agents. If you fail to do so, we will have to go over a little talk again. Yes, okay. And to think we almost lynched our brother. It's good that you came along. We'd already sharpened a pike for his head. Oh, we already know that. We're glad to have you on our side. Go in good health. Thanks. So, what are we gonna do now? Hmm. Let's just send him here to make a little bit of peace. Can he do that too? No. So, I don't know. I think I'm gonna just gonna send him here. He can go there and go fight someone. Oh, no. He doesn't need to fight anyone here. Hmm. Then let's go there. So, I think we're doing really good. So, let's start our intrigue. Seeing how you dealt with the Rolands and the mayor of Paris, Gobel now sees you as a threat. The brothel used to be an important source of income and information for him, and as the mayor, Pash allowed him to control the city. The archbishop himself planned your assassination and arranged the death of your son, forcing both the Rolands and Pash to take part in the crimes. Oh, nobody. You're... Numbers of success required to win. Oh, we only need two successes to win? Oh no, will this be hard? So, what about this? Do we have to perform two actions? Okay. The information about the Archbishop's illegitimate child should not be a secret any longer. We need to make sure these rumors reach the ears of Prosecutor Tinville and ordinary Parisians. Some questionable man over Mala favor. Let us use it. Clovis will search the gutters and force a few of the homeless to spread rumors about Gobble. David will talk about the scandal to several well-connected gambling companions. I think that would be the best choice, right? I would think I'm gonna go with diplomacy. 70% chance of success is good. What about this? It is time to look for rotten apples in Gobel's or orchard. If we reveal the wrongdoings of his subordinates, we will undermine people's trust in the Archbishop. After the rebellion in Vendée, the clergy has been under constant attack from people who believe the church to be responsible. Let us not involve strangers in the search. Ramel will personally hunt down those who have wandered from the flock. Surely threatening a few spineless former priests will help us to learn some of Gobel's secret. The convention deputies must know something. They would not make Gobel archbishop if they did not have something on him. That does sound interesting though. But, this sounds, but that sounds risky as well. I mean, I suppose if we send Ramel, we will soon get to question or talk to some people to convince them. Hmm. But I guess this is about learning secrets about Gobel, so maybe diplomacy is a good way to... Let's see. Okay, 50%. Let's see how this goes. Okay, well then, let's go for the day.
Today we only have several minor cases to deal with. Oh, okay. Oh, I oh, uh, I forgot. I spent all those points. I spent only two points on on freeing Rommel, and then I forgot to use the other two and spending more time with the family. Three 15-year-olds, Solène Bethune, Adèle Geoffroy, and Bernard Dross were summoning spirits in the cellar of a tenement in Section du Faubourg du Nord. The candles they were using were stolen. The ritual was interrupted by the caretaker. Ah, uh, no. 68-year-old Hippolyte Rouanet has been harassing his neighbors for quite some time. Recently, he set dogs on a group of children who live in the same building as he does. That was the last straw their parents decided to accuse him of assault. If he really sent, I mean, like, wild and aggressive dogs on the children, that is something to be punished for. Hmm. He's not innocent, I guess. Armand Pelletier, a soldier in the National Guard, took a break during a patrol to go to an inn by the river. The locals saw him drinking dark foreign beer. The owner testified that Pelletier demanded free drinks, threatening that otherwise the owner shall be in trouble. Hmm shouldn't abuse your power. Hugo Serf accused his neighbor, Fabien Brasseur, of breaking into a shed in their jointly owned garden. While being detained, Brasseur claimed that the shed belonged to everyone and that Serf had illegally locked it. The investigators asked other inhabitants about the ownership of the shed, but they said they didn't know. Oh, no. No, that's just stupid. During a trade visit to the north of France, Michael Loup allegedly had intercourse with Boissonnat, a widow who runs a DOS house in Rouen. The claim was filed by the wife of the accused. It was not backed with any evidence. <sighs> okay. So seriously, I thought that it, if it was an obvious case, I mean, if there's no evidence, this is not an obvious case. How can this just be such a, how can this just be a short case? No, I'm not gonna sentence him to death for this, if there is not even evidence. 16-year-old marie José Dumont bought two kilograms of onions at the street market, yet she paid for only one. The next time the girl showed up at the market, the storekeeper took her to the nearest police station. Come on, this could have been also a mistake or whatever. Oh, no. You know, I'm starting to have the feeling that the common folk is is all ab is all on board with everyone that I want to behead. They're just so thirsty for blood. I mean, it feels like it. I didn't pay that much of attention, but it feels like it. Thank you. Even the least powerful deserve justice. Yeah, you always say the same thing, dude. Okay, well then. That was a torture. Oh. I just opened my diary to see if our son drew us something. I guess he didn't. That's sad. Um, I would like to go home because I need to work on my statue. I think I need to do this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm not sorry for you, wife, and I don't know about you, Bernard. I I kind of have mixed emotions towards you. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, finally! Finally, it's not me who got captured. Okay, you're going here to lower a bit of the mood. I think they're gonna stir up a commotion real soon, too. Ooh, it's 17%. <sighs> Do I have enough points? No, I have only one. That sucks. So if I move him there now, will this make any difference? No. Because he's wounded. It won't make a difference, I guess. So let's commence the intrigue. What? That was a failure? But at least that was a success. Let us hope that the rumors stimulate Tinville's imagination enough to make him officially look into Gobel's case. It is important to cast a shadow of doubt on the Archbishop to show the deputies who are scared of him that Gobel has a weak point. 
Oh no, now I have to convince him and I only have one point. <sighs> that could be hard. Please forgive me for being a little late. You have only piqued my curiosity, Monsieur Le Juge, as I cannot guess what I have done to deserve this invitation. You must have heard rumors about Archbishop Gobel. Come now, Alexis. You are poking fun at my intelligence. We both know that you are the author of the denunciation. How can you be so sure? I am not a fool. You have eliminated Roland and Pache, and now you are trying to get Gobel. The reason why may elude me, but I do not care. Oh, you're a smart little guy, aren't you? Hmm, I think it is important to bring over this point. Hmm, okay, so that is obviously carelessness. I think bullheaded was... I made a lot of mistakes before, but bullheaded was humility that worked. Um, he has a huge following. If Gobel has a child, we should review. Hmm, I think I'm gonna go with aggression and here with manipulation. Just a feeling, so let's see. Okay, perfect, perfect, good, and weak. So either it's aggression or maybe humility even. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. As long as your balance of profits is positive. There are some people, however, who care about justice. What do I care about anyone's bastard? The country is in flames because of the rebellion in Vendee, and I am supposed to be preoccupied with something like this. An illegitimate child in Paris. Now that truly is a novelty. Okay, well, then let's go to good argument. You must be the toughest man in Paris. You are not bothered by the mob, which has once again decided that cutting the heads off dignitaries would be fashionable. It is enough for Gobel to shout from his pulpit that you are enjoying yourself in a brothel for public money instead of prosecuting lawbreakers. And before you know it, your head will be gone. Mm, your words do make some sense. These days, people are indeed full of negative thoughts. So... I think I'm going to go with humility. You deserve a much higher position than that of a prosecutor. You could become a symbol of justice. But Gobel will not let you rise. He does not care for your talent. The only thing that interests him is how deep your spine can bend when you bow before him. Let's hope this works. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I think we're going to do good. Every Catholic should get the chance to redeem themselves. As an archbishop, Gobel should do this openly to console the hurt Parisian souls. And maybe even save the lives of many innocent people. Yes, yes, I am already convinced I will see what can be done. Yes. Maybe it is a good thing that fortune is on your side. After all, you want to go against Gobel. Well, he came after me first, so... Eye for an eye, I guess. Everyone's satisfied. That's good. So, at least that was a success. I mean, we have already won. So, that was it for today. Let's go. Hmm. Okay, so it's another day, it's another trial, and we are going to take a look into this in the next episode. So, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.